Hi everyone, good to see you all again. Today we are going to learn how to create a one stroke leaf Ganesha. We have been learning a lot about one stroke painting and if you are a beginner to one stroke painting, I would request you to practice the basic strokes and then begin to create this leaf Ganesha. If you are new to my channel, kindly check on my other tutorials for you to get a deeper insight into one stroke painting. For your convenience, I have given the links in the description box. Now let's get started with one stroke leaf Ganesha. Before we begin, let's see what all supplies we need. You will need a chart paper to practice. You can take any kind of a chart paper, preferably a smooth paper would be better, like a cartridge paper would be a good one, or ivory board or a tag board, anything works great for one stroke painting. Make sure it's a smooth paper. You will need flat and round brushes. The bristles have to be a Teclon hair bristles for you, only then it will work for one stroke painting. A pencil and an eraser in case you wanted to trace or have a guideline you can have a pencil and eraser to help you with that. Fabric paints, I've taken out the liquid acrylic colors from Faber Castell. There are many brands in the market so you can choose whichever brand is convenient for you. A cup of water, a flat tray or a palette and then a piece of waste cloth. Now let's get started with our one stroke leaf Ganesha. Let's first see our flat brushes. I've taken now Teclon hair brushes. There are many brands in Teclon hair brushes. Right now I'm taking the synthetic hair brushes from Faber Castell. There are other brands in the market so you're free to choose whichever brand is convenient for you. You don't have to go for short handle brush brushes. You can also use a long handle brush like this and the bristles will be in different colors but make sure it is uh, Teclon hair bristles okay that's very important I've taken now brush number 12 here and you will also need brush number 10 and brush number 6 for your basic strokes and you will also need a round brush which is again a Teclon hair brush which is synthetic hair from Faber Castell I'm using brush number 4 round brush and a script brush like brush number 1 or 0 or double zero triple zero anything works great for fine details so those are the Teclon hair brushes which I wanted you to get introduced with so you will be using these brushes uh, for your entire one stroke painting uh, the reason why we are using Teclon hair brushes is because of the spring like tendency because you can actually flex the brush like that can you see how it's flexing you can do a lot of flexing movements the spring like tendency of the brush creates a beautiful effect with one stroke painting so that's the reason we are using Teclon hair bristles for one stroke painting as a first step we are going to make a guideline to make our leaf Ganesha. For that, I'm going to use my pencil and draw a basic outline of a leaf shape. I'm going to make it as a very faint outline. Do not use a marker pen. Just make a faint outline like how I'm doing now going to be the years of the Ganesha then this is going to be a leaf which will depict the tummy part and then here we are going to have a leaf for the hands same way another leaf here for the hand and then the two legs. So like this, we'll create an outline before we begin with our leaf strokes. Let's get this ready. Now let's learn how to load our flat brush with acrylic paints. As a first step, you need to wash your brush. I've taken now brush number 10, flat brush, synthetic hair, Faber Castell. Just washing my brush, drying it on a piece of waste cloth. You can use a tissue paper or waste cloth, anything works for this. Once when you finish drying your brush, you should not be dripping water, okay? It should be damp, but should not be dripping water. So once when you finish drying your brush, you will start loading your flat brush. To load your flat brush, you will be 
using the chisel tip of your flat brush for the loading. Okay, so this is the chisel tip. So you're going to load the heel and toe. So one side of the chisel edge, you're going to take lemon yellow. The other side of the chisel edge, you will be loading sap green. Once when you load it like this, you have to work in the color. So I'm just showing you how to work the color inside your bristles. So you're just going to go to and fro. To and fro. To and fro. So like this, you'll be loading two-thirds of your brush. Now see, it's not gone two-thirds, so it's gone just only halfway. So I need to take again the paint on either side and you load the brush like this, to and fro, to and fro. Like this, you will work the color two-thirds into your brush. Now by accidentally, if you dip into the wrong color on the wrong side, it's still okay. You can make corrections of that. For example, if I go and dip uh, the green part on yellow, for example, if that's a mistake, right? So how you correct that mistake is very simple. Just take it to a piece of waste cloth or tissue paper, just wipe the color and you'll be easily be able to make corrections of the wrong color. So this way, you'll be loading the flat brush to third and you'll be working the color inside your bristles before you begin with your strokes. I'm going to add a little bit of white on the tip of my yellow so that I get a highlight when I shade my stroke. So this way, after you load your bristles with the colors, as a last step, you load only the direct end colors and you're ready to stroke. So once when you have loaded your brush this way, you're going to try the wiggle movement to create a one stroke leaf. To make a wiggle movement for the one stroke leaf, you need to make a marking. The marking goes like this. You'll take a V shape. Like this, you'll create a V shape. This V shape that you create will be used to make your strokes. Now, in one stroke painting, you can always rotate your paper in any direction. There is no hard and fast rule. So it's easy for you to work. So as you work, you can rotate your paper. So let me show you one half of the wiggle movement for the leaf. So just going to keep it like this. You're going to flex the brush like that, using the brush fully. And we're going to taper the brush like that. So that's one half of our wiggle movement leaf. In the same way, we're going to do the other side. So for that, I need to load my color again. So we will go back to the palette. We will load again lemon yellow, sap green, go on the track. Again, load lemon yellow, sap green, go on the track. When you do this on the track, you will notice that you create a gradation of that color. and that's the reason you're getting that mixing there on the surface. So again, we're taking a little white, a little sap cream, just loading it like that and you're ready to stroke. So let's do the other half of our leaf. For the other half, I'm just going to turn the paper a little bit this way so that I can flex the brush. So again, we are going to flex, 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 flex. And we're going to taper the leaf like that. So this way, we will be completing the one stroke leaf movement. Once when you finish the leaf movement, you will be using the chisel tip to create the stem, the center nerve, like that. So this is how we will be creating the one stroke leaf. I hope you understood this basic method. You have to practice this a lot. Only then you can use these leaves to make your leaf Ganesha composition. So once when you finish practicing the basic leaf movements, you are ready to mix these uh, colors on your brushes and you are ready to work on your surface. So to create your leaf Ganesha, we will start with the ears, we will do the legs and then the hands, then the tummy and last we will do the face. 
For that, let's get started now with a leaf. I've already loaded my brush with sap green, lemon yellow and white on the tips. So we are ready to start with our stroke. So I'm just going to turn my paper as I work because it makes your strokes easy to apply that way. So let's get started with the one stroke leaf now. And when you're done with this basic movement, you will put the center vein with your chisel tip of your flat brush. So like this, let's start making leaves on either side for the ears. Now I'm going to do the second ear the same way how I did the first one. I'm going to wiggle my flat brush and I'm going to create the leaf stroke for the next ear. Then I use a chisel tip, I make the center vein like that. Now the next step is going to be doing the hands. So to create the hands, we will load the same colors and we will get started. Actually we should be doing the legs now because the hands go over the leg. So we have to be doing the legs first before we do the hands. So let's do the legs now on either side. So let's get started with our leg movement. I'm just going to start from this area. Wiggle, 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 wiggle and taper. Load the colors again. Every time it's important for you to load the colors. Otherwise you won't get the same color tone with your strokes. So let's get started with this side. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. And then tape. So, and then you need to do the center vein. So like this, we will do the other leg and we'll get it ready. If you notice, I have now completed the leg part of the leaf kanisha. It's important for you to load your flat brush often. For every single stroke, you have to load it. So ensure that you're loading it every time. So let's move on to the uh, hands, okay? To create the hand stroke, we're just going to use the same wiggle movement, the same leaf stroke, and we're going to do it. Watch this. So you're just going to wiggle and taper. Load it again. Wiggle and taper and then make the center way. Same way, let's do the other hand and get it ready. Make sure you load it every time. That's really important. So again, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle and taper. Now it slightly overlaps on the leg, it's still okay, it looks really natural if you do that way and taper. Now that we have completed the leg, hands and ears, we have to now do the tummy and then we will be doing the head. So for the tummy, you need to turn your paper this way, upside down, okay? And then you will create your stroke from there towards the head. So let's get started. We load our brush and we'll get it ready for creating the tummy. So I've loaded now my flat brush with the same colors. I'm now going to show you how to do the tummy part. For the tummy part, you turn the paper upside down and then you create your V shape for your guideline. Okay, from the V shape, you start wiggling and you'll be creating the leaf just like how I showed in the beginning. So for that, you're just going to move the paper a little bit to the side and start making gentle movements and nice large strokes. Okay, do you see that? Same way we'll do the other half. Since our leaf is broad, you have to take some time in filling in the colors. You have to load it frequently and you need to apply. So watch this, just going to make a wiggle, 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 wiggle. See how I'm doing that wiggle, that's a little different one. 
you could also use this method to make larger leaves. So let's do this and get it ready. Now that we have completed the tummy part, we are now going to focus on the head. For the head, you're going to flip the paper this way, okay, you're going to turn it this way. So now you'll have an idea how the placement, the strokes go. So now for the head part, we're going to load the same colors in our flat brush. I'm going to take sap green, lemon yellow, flapping it on my track two, three times. Again, loading the color, working in the color. This is really an important step in one stroke painting because if you don't follow this way of loading, your colors will not work in the bristles and you won't be able to create such strokes. So let's get started with our head part. For the head part, you will be starting the same way like how we did the tummy, provided you'll be creating a V-shaped mark in the beginning there and then you'll be flexing it and bringing it down. Since the head part is a wider leaf, you have to ensure that you create just like how we did the tummy. So for the tummy, we just did this. We took breaks with our strokes. We, make, we made a curved stroke, we took a break. And then we make another curved stroke, we take a break. Another stroke, we take a break. So like this, you take breaks and you will be creating your strokes for the head part. Use the pencil guide as your guide so that you will follow the shape of the leaf and you'll be able to taper it. So I'll load my brush again and I will complete the stroke. So to complete the stroke, I load it like that and then I gradually taper my leaf like that. Okay, the same way I'm going to do the other half of the leaf. So let's load the colors, flap it on our tray. Make sure you're not working under the fan because if you work under the fan, the colors tend to dry very fast because acrylic colors, they tend to dry fast. So like this is stroke, 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 stroke. You can rotate the paper as you work. So you can always fill gaps by taking large moves like how I'm doing. And then create the center wing like that. Now that we have all the leaves composed, it has to dry. And once when the base is dry, we will be adding the features and you can also add a crown here with the shoe flower stroke. So let's see how we can do that. To create our crown for the leaf kanisha, we are going to do a hibiscus flower stroke. For the hibiscus flower, I'm just taking crimson red and lemon yellow in my round brush. This is now a Teclon hair again, Teclon hair bristles, but it's a round brush, number 12, synthetic hair from Faber-Castell. So I'm using this brush to create my uh, one stroke uh, hibiscus. For that, I'm just going to wash my brush first, dry it on my tissue or waste cloth, and then I'm just going to organize the bristles, shape them up like that, and then we are going to dip it into crimson color. To dip into the crimson color, use the color directly from the bottle. Do not use diluted colors. Just dip it directly. Load your full brush with crimson red. And work the color into the bristles. Like this, you dip the brush three times. The full brush should be loaded with crimson red. Once when you finish loading it three times like this, the tip of the brush alone is going to be dipped into lemon yellow. Only the tip, okay? So look how our brushes look now. Full brush is loaded with crimson red and the tip is dipped in lemon yellow. And then you are ready to do your stroke. You will be actually doing this movement to create the hibiscus flower. That is placing the brush on the surface, wiggling it like this, give a jerk and then taper the stroke like that. So that's creating one petal of our hibiscus flower. So we're going to use this technique to create the crown 
for the leaf kinesia. So let's watch this now. To start with the hibiscus leaf stroke as a crown for the leaf kinesia, we are just going to place this like this on the tip part of this leaf. We are going to flex the brush, give a jerk and then taper. Same way we will load the colors again, tip alone in little bit of lemon yellow, we will flex the brush, taper. Flex the brush, taper. Now that we have done three strokes there, you have to make two more because the hibiscus flower has five petals. So load the brush and taper. Flex the brush, give a jerk, taper. Flex the brush. Give a jerk and taper. Now that we have finished all the five petals, you will now add the stigma. The stigma is the center pollen part of the hibiscus flower, which you can add from there with direct crimson like that. And you can create the pollen with little orange, yellow and red like that. So that's going to be the crown part of our leaf kinesia. Now that the crown is also done, we can now add the features. We're going to add the eyes to the ganesha. So let's see how we can do that. So as a next step for creating the eyes for the leaf kinesia, we are just going to use white acrylic paint in our round brush. I've taken now brush number four, synthetic hair from Faber Castell, and we're just going to make a leaf shape like that. For the eyes. The same way we will do the base white color like this and we will leave it to dry. Make sure you're using thick acrylic paints directly from the bottle to not dilute the colors because the diluted colors will won't be opaque on the painted surface. You might have to go over that again and again two three times then. So like this you will apply a base. Leave this base to dry for a few minutes and then you are ready to add the features. Now we are just going to add the bindi for the Ganesha. So for that I am just using now chrome yellow right on the center part of the forehead there. So let's add this tilak. First we will add the chrome yellow which is going to depict the sandal like that. And then we will use some crimson. And we will add the bindi there, the tilak. So that centers the forehead there. So it's easy for you to now do the eyebrows and add the details to the eyes. Once when the base white is dry, you can just take a little bit of orange. Again, I'm using a round brush number four, synthetic hair. I'm just going to fill the eyeball pupil like that. Same way we will do for the other eye like this. Once when this base is dry we will outline it with black paint and we will be completing the leaf kinesia. Now you will be adding the eyebrows then you will make the line for the eyelids make the teardrop there and then the bottom line there outline the orange add details Then you will add the highlight. The highlight has to be super white. Use the back side of your brush to create a tiny dot there for the highlight. So like this, let's complete the other eye and finish our leaf kinesia. 
If you notice, I have completed the other eye of my leaf Ganesha and our leaf Ganesha has come out really beautiful and it's ready for your Ganesh Puja. Now, you have to practice all these basic strokes before you do this leaf Ganesha. So ensure that you practice a lot with this basic leaf movement strokes to create this leaf Ganesha. And I hope you also liked the way how we did our shoe flower stroke to add this crown effect for the leaf Ganesha. I hope you liked my tutorial in creating this leaf Ganesha with one stroke technique. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful Ganesha Dutti.